Hey guys, what's going on? This is Will Foreman from my mama's basement new review show. So I wanted to at least do two, you know, uploads this week. So sorry I'm not in the studio, but here's a stock photo of it. So guys, you know how this goes. It's going to be the movie reviews. It's going to be the Kenton Bond battles. And it's going to be the comic block. You're going to enjoy this one because I got one movie. If you haven't seen it, you need to go out and get it. So all right, guys, let's go. All right, guys, the first movie is In the Mouth of Madness. This is a 1984 American psychological Lovecraftian-style horror film directed and scored by John Carpenter and written by Michael DeLuca. Um, this is actually the third installment after Carpenter's Apocalypse trilogy preceding The Thing and The Prince of Darkness. Check it out, guys. This one will drive you absolutely mad. The riots began because the stores could not meet the demand of Sutter Kane's novel, In the Mouth of Madness. Kane disappeared two, two months ago without a trace. I'm the guy that writes horror books. You can forget about Stephen King. Kane outsells them all. I need to know if he's alive or dead, and I need that book. It's a setup. It's a setup. I, I just have to work out how it's set up. Kane's writing has been known to have an effect on his readers. It's a map. This whole thing has been staged. You just get out. This is not reality. It's all happening for real, Trent. The next movie I couldn't wait for it to come out is called The Void. It is a 2016 Canadian horror film written and directed by Steve Kanaski and Jeremy Gillespie and produced by Jonathan Brofman and Casey Walker. It stars a, you know, a nice cast of people. One of them is Aaron Poole as Deputy Daniel and a couple other people in here. Um, uh, Kenneth Walsh as Dr. Powell. Uh, the plot follows a group of people who are trapped in a hospital by a gathering hooded cultists. The group soon discovers that the hospital has been inhabited by grotesque creatures. If you like H.P. Lovecraft style movies, this is it. Check it out. Here's the trailer. Haven't you ever wished to save someone beyond saving, no matter what the cost? This is uncharted territory. The body has to adjust, of course. We weren't built for this kind of thing. You'd be surprised at the things you find when you go looking. There is something calling them all here. People get in here, what are we supposed to do? You saw it? What was that? Do you know where you go when you die? I do. Alright guys, I told you sometimes I do movies, they don't always have to be horror. This is a movie my son found at the library called Mod. It is a 2016 English language biographical film directed by Alison Walsh and starring Sally Hawkins and Ethan Hawke. It's a co-produced by Ireland, you know, it's co-produced production of Ireland and Canada. The film is about a life of an artist, Maud Lewis, who painted in Nova Scotia. Maud struggles with arthritis, memory you know, arthritis and the memory of a lost child and a family that doubts her ability before, you know, moving in with a gruffy fisherman peddler who was actually Ethan Hawke. Um, despite, you know, their differences in personalities, they marry as her art gains in popularity. This is a very heartfelt movie. Um, I give it a good high rating because it was way different and way better than I thought it was. So check it out, guys. Here's the trailer. Hello there, Charles. Sister. <laughs> I sold the house. Our house? 
smart. Mom left it to me. I'd look after it. You can't look after yourself. I'd get a job or something. A job? A job doing what? I don't... No! Thinking about hiring a woman to help around the house. I want to put up a sign, you know, looking for a housemaid. I'm Maud. It'd be nice for you to have someone around here. Let me tell you how it is. There's me, them dogs, them chickens, then you. Do you want me here, don't you? Because I'll walk out right now. I told you you could paint fairies on the wall. I think it looks all right. Did you paint that happy little chicken? Yeah, I wanted to remember his happier days. How much? What's your price? Five dollars. Not selling that one. Already sold. I'm finished. You can find Maude Lewis selling her paintings from the front steps of her little house here in Marshalltown, Nova Scotia. Mm. Can I get you to look towards the camera this way, Mr. Lewis? And a smile, maybe? You can do much better than me. Then everything I want with you, Ev. Everything. A window. I love a window. The whole of life already framed. Right there. Basement new review show. That's right, it's me, Dark Side. So today we're gonna talk about some mighty beast. So sit back and enjoy. Take it away, Will. Oh, hey, thanks, Dark Side. I told you guys he will finally come back one day. You really can't make him because hell, he rules the galaxy. All right, so let's get on with it. Wrath Amon is the first character. He is a powerful wizard and the main villain of Conan the Adventurer. Rath Ammon was a leader of a snake cult, which consisted of serpent men humanoid snakes who served an evil deity named Set. Rath Ammon was originally a giant gila monster who was turned into a serpent man by his predecessors, Ray Ammon. Check him out. If you know nothing about him, look it up and find some more info you'll like to read on him. All right, guys, the next one is an old one character named Tasa Hagua. Um, he is described as an old one, as I said. He's a godlike being in the Pantheon. He was introduced in the tale of the Sempura Zeros. 
Uh, this character has great girth. He has a bat-like furriness, and he looks like a sleepy black toad, which he is eternally. You know, he will not, he will rise not from his plane, even in the reverend of hunger, but will wait in the divine soulfulness, soulness for the sacrifice. The character's neat. I've only read a little bit about him, but if you don't know nothing about him, here's a pic, here's some info, check it out. All right, the last guy or beast is Shuma Gorath. During Earth's prehistory, Shuma Gorath ruled the world and demanded human sacrifice until eventually banished by by time traveler sorcerer Sesi Neg. The the entity eventually returned during the Hyperborean Age, but is imprisoned within the mountain of power of the god Krom. Shuma Gorath continues to be an influence on Earth until returned to his dimension by Krom. So this character actually dealt with Conan. Um, actually, he was in a video game. If you can tell me who it is, let me know. As your host told you, I am back. So hopefully next week I will be doing something on the show. Don't know what, but I will be doing something. So you better be watching the show or I will conquer you and you will pay and perish. This is Dark Side Out. Watch my mama's basement. New review show or you will pay.